Welcome back to Closing Arguments. I'm Michael Ayala in tonight for Vinny Politan. Now, we begin this hour with a missing child in New Hampshire. Harmony Montgomery was just five years old when she was last seen in 2019, but it wasn't until last fall, two years later, that she was reported missing. Now, on March 25th, the Manchester, New Hampshire Police Department announced the reward for information leading to Harmony has increased to $150,000. And now, new details on Adam Montgomery, Harmony's father, He's already charged with assaulting Harmony and is now facing new charges. We'll get to that in just a minute. First, here's Vinny Politan with background on this story. This is little five-year-old Harmony Montgomery clutching her doll and smiling for the camera. When you look at this picture, everything seems very normal. Harmony seems happy and cared for. But sometimes, pictures can be very deceiving because Harmony's world is anything but normal and happy. Her father has been arrested and charged with second degree assault. The victim, his five-year-old daughter, little Harmony. But that's not the most troubling part of Harmony's world. This picture is from 2019, and there are not any newer pictures of Harmony. The photographs of this little angel are all over two years old. That's because she's been missing since October or November of 2019. Help us find this little girl. Someone knows something, do what is right, and call in. I cannot emphasize that enough. Somebody out there knows something. It's time for people to do the right thing. According to a police affidavit, Harmony's mother, Crystal Sori, says she lost custody to Harmony's father, Adam, because she was dealing with a substance abuse problem. She says the last time she saw Harmony was a FaceTime call on Easter of 2019. Meanwhile, Harmony's father, Adam, says Crystal picked up Harmony for Thanksgiving in 2019, but Adam's girlfriend at the time says Adam told her he dropped Harmony off at Crystal's. Now, back to the assault charges. Adam's uncle claims that Adam admitted to bashing Harmony around the house and witnessing Harmony being spanked very hard, forced to stand in the corner for hours, and scrubbing the toilet with her toothbrush. So while the court system is dealing with the charges against Adam Montgomery, the chief is still looking for this beautiful little girl in the photo. Quite frankly, enough is enough. It's a seven-year-old girl. Let's find her, all right? Let's come together as a community and do the right thing. That's all I'm asking, and I don't think I'm asking a lot. If, if, if people think that I am, then I'll leave it at that. Adam Montgomery, Harmony's father, is now facing eight new charges related to firearms theft. According to police, these new gun charges are unrelated to the search for Harmony and stem back to some time between September and October of 2019, when Montgomery is accused of stealing the weapons. And the complaint also charges Adam as an armed career criminal because he possessed a rifle after having been convicted of three prior felonies. He now faces mandatory minimums of 10 years and up to 40 years on the gun charges. All right, let's bring in tonight's guest. Joining me in Palm Springs, California, retired FBI special agent and producer on Indivisible Healing Hate, streaming on Paramount Plus, Bobby Chacon. In Salt Lake City, Utah, retired police commander and host of the Profiling Evil podcast, Mike King. And in Boston, Massachusetts, a great reporter with Boston 25 WFXT TV, Bob Ward, is joining us as well. Gentlemen, thanks to all of you for being with me tonight. Uh, Bob, let me start with you because you're on the ground close. You've been following this case for quite a while. Um, first and foremost, it's, is it safe to say that these charges are definitely not related to what's happened to Harmony? As far as we know, these charges are not related to the disappearance of Harmony Montgomery. That's absolutely right. However, these charges stem from the Harmony Montgomery investigation. So I talked to the senior uh, assistant in, of the New Hampshire Attorney General's office about this just yesterday, and I asked him about this. And he said, basically, they were looking at Adam Montgomery and his family at about the time that Harmony disappeared. So back in that 2019 timeframe. And as they're investigating 
what Adam and his family were up to at that time, they started coming across this evidence about these missing weapons. Now, we don't know a lot about these missing guns yet. We know there are two. There's a rifle and a shotgun. One uh, weapon was found down in Boston. Another one was found up in Manchester, New Hampshire, in that area. There's also talk of a third weapon that has never been recovered. We don't know who the weapons were stolen from. We don't know if they were taken from a gun shop or were taken from somebody else. But these are the charges that, that he's going to face. He's being arraigned tomorrow in Superior Court up in Manchester at 11 o'clock in the morning. And we're hoping that for the first time since Harmony Montgomery, we found out that Harmony Montgomery was missing, we'll actually get to see him in a court of law. He's been able to stay away from the cameras up until now. What can you tell us about the search for Harmony? Now, again, th these, this investigation is part of the, the investigation into what's happened to Harmony. That's where these charges are coming out of that investigation. Right. What do we know about where they are in terms of perhaps finding Harmony? Well, we do know that the physical search for Harmony Montgomery ended back in January. That's when the FBI and the Manchester police searched the house on Guilford Street in Manchester where Harmony was living with her family around the time that she disappeared. They searched that house for about four or five days and they did not find harmony. We don't know what they found, but they did not find harmony. So since then, authorities have been very quiet about what they've been doing. But one interesting thing is just yesterday when I was up in New Hampshire, I asked about the search and they and I asked about that tip line, $150,000, an awful lot of money. Why is it that no one is coming forward uh, telling them something? Uh, the AG's office told me two things. One is that uh, they think that there are people out there with information who may not be maliciously hanging on to it, but just don't know enough to come forward. So that's number one. Number two, they said they got new information just last week because of that tip line, because of that $150,000, they called it serious information. Wouldn't go any further than that, but they're saying that they are getting good, credible tips even now. And I did ask, do you feel confident that you have a clearer picture of what happened to Harmony? And the answer to that was, yes, we do. Bob, you know, yeah, I was listening to the press conference uh, announcing the charges or the additional charges against Adam Montgomery. And there was a statement made that there was some good information gotten about where Harmony could be or what might have happened to Harmony from that investigation into the guns. Do you know anything about that? All I know is that they're talking to a lot of people around Adam Montgomery and Kayla, who is his ex-wife, hesitate to use the phrase stepmother because of what's happened, but uh, she was the mother figure in the house at the time that uh, Harmony disappeared. Uh, that's Kayla. Kayla is in jail right now. She's um, charged with welfare fraud. She was cashing some welfare checks that belonged to Harmony after Harmony disappeared, allegedly. So. Um, Kayla is in jail from what we understand that neither one of them is telling them about what happened to Harmony. But we know that they're talking to other people around them. They're finding new people. They're finding people who that they, that Kayla and Adam spoke to, were friendly with. And they're trying to reach as many of those people as possible to see if Adam or Kayla said something about Harmony that changes what we know. The senior uh, Assistant New Hampshire Attorney General that I spoke to yesterday said that they are getting a clearer picture of what happened to Harmony. All right, well, of course, there's nice. no new official search, but that's what mm -hmm. they're saying. Well, well that, that's absolutely great news. Bob, stand by. I want to get my investigators involved in this. Bobby Chacon, Mike uh, King. Um, uh, Bobby, let me start with you. Um, this idea of going into and digging into and intensely looking at the past of Adam Montgomery around the time of the disappearance of Harmony, it, it makes fantastic sense. I, I wasn't even thinking about it in those terms, but if you can get into his activities during that time, they may be able to trace what happened to Harmony. Sure, because you know this he's a career criminal, so he's he's obviously carrying out these criminal activities. And I don't think, you know, if if he if he did something to Harmony, um, disposing of Harmony's body would go along with some of his other criminal, could go along with some of his other criminal activity, where he's carrying out that activity. Who is he carrying out that activity with? So, you know, we all have a life where it's pretty routine. So you look into his routines. This person's routine was, was criminal activity. So they're looking at that and seeing if, you know, if uh, doing harm to Harmony and then hiding her body could have been part of this routine so that's why they merge together they merge what he was doing in his in his criminal life because he's look he's a career criminal he's a liar he's a coward i mean what kind of man punches a five-year-old girl in the face so I, I think that this guy he's 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 not very smart 
And I think that they're looking at things that he might have said to people, even if, if there are people that have talked to him, even if he didn't mention this, don't self-censor yourself. If he said something, just call the authorities, let them know, let them piece it together. Even if you think it's not important, even if you think it's not related, let the authorities figure it out and see if it's related because they have a whole lot more information than we know and that's been put out to the public. Yeah, and they're being very close, close to the vest on this, which makes a lot of sense. Bob, uh, you actually broke a story a while back regarding um, Adam Montgomery being connected to a murder uh, in 2008, and this goes to Bobby's point about this guy just being just, just not a very good yeah. guy. Um, do you know the latest on that, if they're still investigating or where the investigation stands on that? Well, it sounds like that the investigations are going on in separate silos, if you will, because I asked that. I wanted to know, is Massachusetts, have the authorities in Massachusetts been in touch with the attorney general's office in New Hampshire? Are you coordinating this, trying to move the ball forward? And they said they are not talking to Massachusetts. Uh, the last I heard from Massachusetts, from the detectives working the case on this end, they said that they, they called up to Manchester uh, when all this began, uh, gave them a courtesy call and told them, hey, that's the guy we're looking at for this murder back in 2008. So they are aware of each other, but so far there's no coordinated effort between the two states. New Hampshire has, is, it looks like they're taking the lead because they've got the open case right now. They've got a missing little girl and they're doing everything they can to try to find her. Bobby Chacon, you know, and again, referencing that uh, press conference that I watched earlier regarding these new charges against Adam Montgomery, one of the things I, I made a note of something that was said, and they were terming the search for Harmony Montgomery, they termed it a rescue mission. Now, you're someone that's been inv involved in this type of thing. What does that mean, the, a rescue mission? Does that mean they're optimistic they might find her alive? Well, it certainly would seem that way. Way. I mean, look, the statistics are not good in this type of case um, uh, for, for a successful outcome of finding this little girl alive. Now, that's, you know, we all the time we're surprised. You know, we've had cases here in California where a girl's found 19 years later. Um, and so, you know, there are cases where it happens. And um, in this particular case, I'd be very surprised if there's a successful outcome like that. But I don't know what's in that investigative case file. I don't know what they know, obviously. And so I'm hopeful that those words that you, because I picked up on those same words, and I'm hopeful that those words mean they think, you know, there's a chance that he might have either sold this child for money or trafficked her so that she's still alive somewhere. That's, that's my hope. Yeah, when I heard the rifles and the stealing of guns and thinking about a child, I'm thinking maybe there's some bartering going on, which... I think in the long run, it's not a wonderful result. Will probably be a decent result. Mike King, what what are your thoughts on what's going on now? This Adam Montgomery guy being facing new charges regarding these guns and and the search for um, Harmony Montgomery being called a rescue mission now. So that's pretty interesting. I, I think it's really optimistic that they're calling it that, and hopefully they have information that's leading them to use those terms, and it's not just something that just came out without really thinking it through. I got to think that it that they do have some information there. But we got to go back and look at this guy's history and, and the fact that he has a history of gun violence. He has a history of aggravated robberies. He has a history of these assault charges. Uh, th there's this thing that we talk about all the time when we look at these cases, and that is that past behavior is always predictive of future behavior. And so we think about what this child may have gone through. I don't know that she was ever uh, ex it pushed into that kind of a situation where there was gun violence with the child. But certainly this was a violent household. This was a violent individual based on things that we know about him. And so I, I keep going back to, I'm thrilled with the idea that there's searches going on. I know that there was a group of citizens that went out again last weekend and tried to look for this little girl. Hopefully it's being coordinated with local authorities and it's being done in the right way. But I got to keep going back to the fact that this child disappeared for two years, Michael, two years that there was no accountability. And I'm seeing lots of finger pointing going on from, from uh, the, the parents, the family, the extended family, state to state. Bottom line is two years she was failed. Yeah, I mean, there's so many, you know, all the fingers are pointing, and I think everyone has to account for what happened to this little girl. Hopefully things will turn out well when they ultimately find her. Bob, you touched on this earlier. Um, there's a court date tomorrow for Adam Montgomery. What, what are we expecting to happen tomorrow? 
Well, he will be arraigned on these new charges, and we're hoping, as I said before, that we'll be able to finally see him. When he was arraigned on the assault charges back in January, he was allowed to stay down in the basement in his jail cell. He waived his right to a bail hearing, so he did not even have to come into the courtroom, so we never saw him. Um, we're not sure if that can re that'll replay tomorrow or if he's going to do a video link from the jail where he's been sitting since January. He's held without bail. He's not going anywhere. So he's still held. And um, so he's going to be he's going to be arraigned on these charges tomorrow in Superior Court, New Hampshire. We understand that the affidavit supporting these charges is sealed right now and it may remain sealed tomorrow. So I'm hoping that changes because I need some information on what's behind these gun charges. So we're hoping um, I'll be there. I'm going to be there at 11 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to be there and I'm um, hoping to, to finally lay eyes on this guy. Yeah, you've been doing a fast, fantastic job reporting on this case. You'll Thank be there you. tomorrow. Maybe we'll be able to get you back for an update, but we'll certainly be updating our viewers on what happens tomorrow in court. Bob Ward, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Truly you wonderful to have you on the show. That's from WFXT up there in Boston.